Welcome to The Real News. I'm Eddie Conway, and this is our Light Behind Bars segment. And today we're discussing prison reform in California and significant victories that has been made toward reducing the prison population and providing rights to incarcerated women and men. Our guest today is Diana Zuniga. Diana is the statewide coordinator for California's United for a Responsible Budget. Based in Los Angeles, Diana provides leadership and support to county level struggles about realignment and works to develop a deeper and broader base for cur curb in Southern California. So let's start by talking about your organization. What is Californians United for a Responsible Budget? Yes, uh, Californians United for a Responsible Budget is a broad-based coalition of over 70 organizations, all working um, for three basic demands. Uh, one, to stop the amount of prisons and jails being built throughout the state of California. Uh, two, to reduce the amount of people inside of prisons and jails. And three, to reinvest the dollars into community alternatives to incarceration, restoring the social safety net, education, and all the things that have been cut for so long in California's um, budget. Uh, we do this in a number of ways. Uh, so our coalition really focuses in on monitoring the state corrections budget, monitoring the court order to reduce the, pr the prison population. And now we've also done a lot of organizing in counties um, throughout the state of California that are trying to build jails um, to answer uh, the population reduction order. Okay, the California prison system was sued for overcrowding. What is the significance of Coleman versus Brown lawsuit in California? And what is the origin of the lawsuit? Yes, um, it is an extremely important lawsuit that really put a spotlight on what was happening in California prisons. Um, in about 2011, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that overcrowding was resulting in cruel and unusual punishment and was in violation of the Eighth Amendment. Uh, the court found that because of the overcrowding, um, the, the primary cause was unconstitutional conditions for people that had medical and mental health conditions. This was actually actually um, before the lawsuit resulting in at least one person dying a week due to um, inadequate mental and medical health care in California prisons. Um, as a result, California actually went under federal receivership um, and is still currently under federal receivership. Um, it is, uh, it's been a while, but um, the, the U.S. Supreme Court also granted um, a two-year extension for California to actually meet this court order to reduce the prison population. Uh, California has to get to a mark of 137.5% of design capacity, which is what the Plata Coleman case actually resulted in. Um, right now, uh, California has actually reached a 137.2% of design capacity um, um, so it's it's actually under the court order um, because it created um, very concrete parole and sentencing reform policies that then resulted in, in a dramatic reduction. Uh, we still know that there are issues with medical and mental health care in the California prisons. And for that reason, we're continuing to push to expand these programs um, even more substantially. Well, well, let me let me get some clarification on this. Is this the lawsuit that was supposed to cause uh, 20,000 uh, uh, people serving life sentences to uh, be released and uh, Governor uh, Brown, I believe it was, decided not to release them? Is this the same lawsuit? So this is the lawsuit that resulted in a few different things. Um, the first thing it resulted in was the building of a medical prison uh, called the Stockton Medical Facility in order to answer the inadequate medical care that um, prisoners were receiving inside of the California prisons. Um, it also resulted in public safety realignment. Um, public safety realignment was actually the shifting of people from serving their time in state prison to now serving their time in county jail. 
It resulted in the counties being in charge of two different populations now. Um, the first was um, after public safety realignment was implemented in 2011, uh, the first population was everybody that um, was convicted of a non-serious, non-violent, non-sexual offense would now serve their time in county jail. Uh, the second population was any folks that were actually serving um, prison time for nonviolent, non serious, non sexual offenses would now be on county probation instead of state parole. So it really shifted um, a, a huge amount of people um, from the state, um, the state being responsible for them, um, for, and now the county was responsible for them. What it also resulted in last year was us being able to, um, along with uh, really a push from the court order, um, implement three particular um, uh, parole reform strategies um, through the budget. The first strategy was elder parole. The second strategy was increasing um, credit earning for nonviolent second strikers. And the third was expanding um, medical parole. So it resulted in, in a few different things. The building of additional facilities was one. The second was shifting um, people from uh, the state level to the county level. And the third was actually very smart um, parole and sentencing reform strategies that we're now trying to work to expand. OK. Uh, but it's it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, that very few people were, were actually released as a result of the the success of the lawsuit. It seems that there's still some sort of pushback from uh, the governor, uh, mm -hmm. and obviously putting people in the county jails and saying that's reducing the California uh, prison population is one thing, but uh, did. Uh, in terms of numbers, did people actually get released uh, other than those people that were eligible uh, for the smart parole reform? Yeah, um, there weren't as many people as we would like that, that really got released. Um, we, we basically have seen that there's been about... Um, there's been about 115 people that have been released um, due to elder parole. Um, and this is, uh, you know, there's there's been about 545 people that have been eligible for elder parole. So you can just kind of see um, kind of the gaps that there aren't enough people that are actually being able to um, to get these types of programs. Um, additionally, um, with the credit earning, th that did reduce the amount of people by, by a, a pretty good amount. There was about 4,000 people that were impacted by the expansion of credits. Um, at the state prison level. And what also resulted in, in about 2,700 people getting released was um, the passage of Prop 47 this past year, um, which decreased some felonies to misdemeanors. Mm, okay, okay. All right, how much does the state of California spend on incarcerating one person? And is there a cost difference between incarcerating someone younger and older? Yes. So the state spends about fifty to sixty thousand dollars per year to incarcerate someone in a state prison. Um, additionally, you're right that um, it costs actually go up as people age. Um, as folks age inside of the state prison system, um, medical costs go up, um, which actually increases the amount of money that is has to be used to house somebody in a state prison. So just for example, if um, you know it's forty to fifty thousand dollars per year to have somebody in a state prison. Additionally, if that person is um, 50 to 59 years old, it's about $8,000 additionally additional on top of the 50 to 60 for their medical costs. Um, for people age 60 to 69, it increases even further for medical costs to about 14,000. And for people 70 to 79, medical costs increase to about 23,000. Um, so as you get older, your um, the cost to house folks in prison actually increases due to all of the medical things that folks need. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the elderly parole program and how does the Senate Bill 224 change the existing law? 
Mm-hmm. So um, the elder parole program was, again, a result of the uh, court order to reduce the prison population. What happened last year was this uh, parole reform was actually moved through the budget. So it wasn't actually codified into law. So it's not a law. It's just an administrative program that the California Department of Corrections is implementing right now. So what SB 224 does is actually codifies the elder parole program so that this is a program that continues to exist beyond the court order. Um, So our real push right now is that, yes, this is a this is a good program. It's getting some folks out. And now we have to actually make it into law so that it's a continuous program um, always. Um, There's 15 other states that actually have this law in place, and it has been very successful and very effective, and we are pushing California to do the same. Right now, the California Department of Corrections is implementing elder parole for folks that are 60 years and older and have served 25 years of their time. Mm. Our bill, SB 224, actually expands this for folks that are 50 years and older and have served 15 years of their time. We thought that the 50-year-old mark was um, was definitely a good step in the right direction because we know, and there are reports that say that people at, people in prison actually age 10 to 15 years older um, physiologically. Um, so if a person is 50 years old and they've been serving time in prison, um, physiologically their body has actually aged to 60 years old. Um, so we thought actually expanding it to, to people that are 50 years older um, would be a lot more beneficial for the people inside of prison and would actually be a cost savings to the state as well. Mm, okay. I'm sorry to hear that, too, about the aging process for the years spent in prison. Uh, what is the recidivism rate in California, and what are some of the initiatives that were passed recently to reduce the prison population in California? Yeah. Um, the recidivism rate right now is about 65 to 70 percent, still um, pretty high. Um, mm-hmm. We also think that, you know, there hasn't been enough money actually going to community-based organizations to actually prevent people from recidivating. Um, A lot of times when people are coming out of prison or jail um, or any type of incarceration facility, um, what they need is housing. They need um, adequate food. They need services. um, And a lot of times there's not actually enough money that allows these folks to um, get any types of programs like this for an extended amount of time. Um, After about five to six months, a lot of times they're um, cut off of community-based programming because not enough money is going into those programs. Uh, Last year, what we saw was that there was about um, $40 million that was approved um, for the California Department of Corrections to increase the amount of programs that they had inside of prison. Um, So that would include substance abuse, mental health programs, anger management, um, you know, the, the list could go on. The community actually only got $8 million from last year's budget to reduce recidivism. So you can just kind of see the amount of money that continues to be fueled into programs inside the prisons, which we know are needed, um, versus the amount of money that's actually going into community-based organizations to provide the services when folks are coming home. Um, So that's another part of the advocacy that we do is we really try to push for more money to go into community-based organizations so that when people are returning home, they actually have the resources that they could, um, that, that they need um, to prevent recidivism. Mm-hmm. Additionally, uh, with Prop 47, um, there will be an amount of money that will be saved uh, due to this change in, in um, this voter initiative. Um, the money that is saved will not be divided out to um, community-based organizations or the counties until next year. And some of this money is supposed to support um, programs that would help people that have substance abuse or mental health uh, conditions. Diana, thank you for joining me and thank you for participating in this segment of The Light Behind Bars. Definitely. And thank you for joining The Real News.